How many times have you wanted to tweak the lighting in your interior Arcvis renders, say going from a daytime scene to a nighttime scene, only to find yourself stuck in an endless loop of adjusting values, hitting render, waiting for it, and then you're not really satisfied. So you gotta go back, you adjust it again and tweak it, and it, the cycle continues until you finally get it just right. What if I told you there's a better way? Well, there is. I'm going to show you how to use light groups in Blender, and that makes this whole process a lot easier. With light groups, you only need to render once and can then adjust the lighting in your scene in no time without the need for endless re-rendering, which gives you the flexibility to perfect your scene's lighting very, very fast. Especially if you're doing client work and say they request a whole bunch of different lighting setups, you need to know this. Let's see how it's done. So I've created this modern living room scene here with a couch area and a big TV wall. And we got all these different light sources coming in here. So we got first and foremost, our uh, big sliding door area here where the sun and the environment light can come in. And the reason I have these curtains in front of it actually have something to do with the light groups themselves. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Also as a support for the environment, if I rotate around here a little bit, I have a big area light in the back here, which is basically behind the camera. And that will support the environment light a little. And you could pretend that there is another room or another window or whatever in the back, just to support the, the daytime scene a little bit. And I also have a, another area light outside the window here coming in. You can see the line here, uh, just to make the, the shadows a little softer. Now, in addition to that, we have a bunch of spotlights in the ceiling and that allows for full illumination of the room during a nighttime scene. Also along the ceiling, we have a light cornice, which makes for a nice and cozy light and even allows for some, maybe some RGB lighting or something. Around the TV wall, we have some indirect lighting behind the TV and underneath here, and also some in cabinet lighting, which we want to treat separately. So now, if I hit render on this scene right now, this is what it would be, right? We have uh, all the lights on, it's daytime, it looks okay, but let's say I wanna do a, night, a daytime scene, I wouldn't wanna have all these lights on all day long. Uh, vice versa, I would like to do an evening scene, so I would have to have the environment dark. So I could go in and adjust all the lights and, and change everything and then re-render, but I don't have to do that. We are going to set this all up that we can adjust every single light source individually. And that's where the light groups come in. So what are light groups? Well, if we look at the Blender manual, it says light groups provide render passes that only contain information from the lights within that group. Light groups can be used to easily tweak the lighting color and intensity of specific lights without having to re-render the scene. All right, that sounds great. That's exactly what we want. But we have to do some legwork first. First, we have to create the groups that we want to control, and then we have to assign the light sources to their respective groups. So if I go over to my layer properties here, view layer properties, and I scroll down, I have this section called light groups, which is exactly what we want. And with this little plus icon here, I can now create as many light groups as I want. So let's set up the light groups that we want, and then we add the lights to them. So first I'm going to add a light group and I'm going to call this ENV for environment. I'm going to add another one and I'm going to call this ENV support. And that is where I'm going to add the, uh, the area lights. So next we have the spotlights in the ceiling. So we need a light group for that. We call it spotlights. Then we have our light cornice. Uh, what else do we have? We have the surrounding lights on the TV wall. So let's just call this TV wall because I would want to control the indirect lighting behind the TV and on the bottom here at the same time. And lastly, we have the in cabinet lighting. So let's add one more and call this in cabinet. So additionally, while we're in our view layer properties, we want to scroll up one more time and check denoising data because the uh, render denoiser does not apply to light groups. It's pure light data, and we have to denoise that after the fact in the compositor. So make sure you 
check that denoising data if you go this route. So now we have to assign our lights to the groups. So let's hand on over to our world properties first and throw the HDRI into a light group. So we have to scroll down here and under settings, we find light group. So if we click in this field here, we can just choose our ENV light group and that's all we got to do. So now we got to change all the other lights. So I have them relatively organized, which is always a good thing to have. So I can go into my environment and I know these are the two area lights that I have coming through the window and from the back. So both of them will go into the same light group, which is our support group. And on lights and objects, we'll find it under the object properties. And we'll have to scroll down to shading, open up the tab, and there we have our light groups. So now we can throw these into the ENV support. We'll do that for both of them. So next I have to do the same thing for the spotlights. And all I have to do are for one of them because they're spread out with an array modifier, which is nice. Um, but I have to make sure if I zoom into one of these here and go into solid view so we can see it, they consist of the light object itself, the model, and then they have an area light attached to them. So in a case like this, I want to make sure that I add the object and the area light both to the same light group. If I don't do that, I would not see the emission that is attached to that light source. So let's select the spotlight itself and under shading, light group, spotlights. And then we go to the IES disk, which is the, the object that emits the light and add this to the spotlights too. I had that once when I did a, a kitchen visualization and I had an oven in there with all the displays lit up. And when I went the route with the light groups, the display wouldn't show. And I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out why. And it, eventually it hit me that the uh, display lights were an emission object themselves and I did not add them to the light group. So they did not show up in the render. So that is important to always add anything that has emission and any light source to a light group if you go this route, that is very important. So for the other lights, it's the same process. On, I wanna make sure I do it for every single one of them. So let's do the light corners next. So I have four area lights in there. Normally while creating a scene like this, I would uh, do it on the first one. I would plan ahead, I would do it on the first one. And then when I copy them, it just copies the light group with it, which would make it a lot easier. But for the sake of this tutorial, for demonstration purposes, I didn't do it here. So it's a little more tedious to add them all one by one. So let's go to the TV wall. I'm just going to add them all. So TV wall area lights go into TV wall. And then I have the in cabinet lighting. And it's the same thing again, like the spotlights. We have the light object, which has a, an emission on there and then an, a light attached to that. So I'm just going to add them all quickly. Great, now that we have everything set up and all my light sources have their basic settings, we're almost ready to render. Uh, I just wanna make sure that on my TV wall, all my lights have the same color and I wanna have that same color on the light cornice too. Because if I wanna say have some RGB lighting in there, I wanna have the same color on the light cornice and the indirect lighting on the TV wall. Otherwise it looks a little funky. So I wanna make sure pre-render that all those lights have the same base color that way it's a lot easier after the fact to adjust them to the same color now with all that done we are ready to render this scene once let's go into solid view and hit render and there it is all the lights are on everything's working and the scene doesn't really know what time of day it is or maybe the homeowner just doesn't care about the power bill who knows? Anyway, let's head over to our compositor. And first, since we're now in Blender 4.2, I want to make sure that under options, I have GPU usage activated. Otherwise, the compositor in Blender is painfully slow, which is actually one of the reasons that uh, I'm not a big fan of the Blender compositor. I usually don't do much more than the lighting in here. And then I just save the file and throw it at Affinity and do the rest of the image there. Since we have GPU support now, it, it's gotten a little better. I don't know, what do, you, what do you think? Do you use Blender's Compositor a lot? 
Uh, do you have a different pipeline? Let me know in the comments below. But I digress here. So let's focus on this here. And first, let's take a look at our render layers node. And right away, we notice that we have a bunch more outputs. First of all, we see our denoising outputs from the denoising data that we're going to need later. But more importantly, we see our light groups down here. The environment, environment spot, spotlights, etc. So let's have a look at them first. So if we click through until we get there, there's our pure HDRI lighting. We have the support lights, just our spotlights, the light corners, the combined TV wall, and the in-cabinet lighting all separately accessible now. So before we start adjusting, let's add them all back together. So I'm going to bring in a shift a mix color node. I'm going to set it to add and I'm going to start just adding all these passes together. I'm going to get that viewer node out of the way here for a sec. So shift D. By the way, I have the uh, background turned off in the compositor and I, instead I just have an an image editor open here with the viewer node selected. That way it makes it a lot easier to zoom in and out. And I don't get any distractions here and can just focus on the nodes. So now if we look at our final add node, we can see that all these passes combined together make the same image as the combined result, aside from the denoising, which we can bring in later. But we know that all the passes work correctly and all of our lights are illuminating the way we want them to. Now we can start adjusting. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Some people just like to do it with an exposure node and dial that value up and down. Uh, I do it slightly differently just so it makes more sense in my brain. I find that a little easier to, and more uh, intuitive to work with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make some room here. I'm going to bring these way over there. And I'm also going to sever this here so it's out of my way. Um, I'm going to bring in a hue saturation value node and an exposure node. And I'm going to select both of them and control G to make a group out of them. So now I'm going to plug my HSV into the exposure and the exposure into the group output. I'm also going to drag the image into my group input. And first I want to do, I want to reorganize it a little. So the first thing I'm going to plug in into my input is the value node. And over here in the uh, group properties, I'm going to rename that to on off. I'm also going to change the max value to one. So I'm basically treating it like a light switch. It's either on or off. I wish I could toggle that just, but I don't know how. So this is how I do it. I have my on off switch and then I adjust the strength with the exposure. And then I also have the uh, hue and saturation, which I can then use to change the color of the lights. There we are at the RGB lighting. So now I can tap out of that group and I have my nice group here and I can also rename this. Let's call this light group control. So now I can drop that node into all my streams here. I can duplicate it and drop it in into each and every one of them. Nope, that was not supposed to happen. That was supposed to go in there. Uh, Shift D, bunch of times, drop them all in. All right, so now I have access to every light source in my scene and I can adjust them. So now I could go in and turn all my lights off except for the environment. So I just take my on off switch and turn them all off. And for, let's say I want to have a daytime scene. I can now go in and play with the exposure here, or I can also do it in the color management to bring up the overall exposure in the scene and then additionally adjust, let's say the uh, support lights. So I have a little bit more light coming in from the outside here. And that way I can have my daytime scene with all the lights turned off. Or let's say I want to have a daytime scene, but the in-cabinet lighting, I still want to see what's in there because the black uh, epoxy, which I planned for this one here, uh, doesn't let light a lot of light through from the environment. So I could look for my in-cabinet, which is the last one, 
and just turn that on. On the same token, I can do the opposite. I can turn the environment off and turn all the other lights on. I would have to dial the scene exposure down a little. And let's say I want to have a full illumination because I'm cleaning or I have game night or whatever. Uh, so we would go into our spotlights with is this one here and we would bring that exposure up a little and we can also play with the hue saturation value node although the spotlights would probably be just a black body load so i would instead play with the saturation if i want to have it a little colder or a little warmer depending on the temperature there i would go the uh, saturation route or let's say we have movie night and we have we want to have just cozy environment. So we would dial the spotlights way down to just have some ambient lighting there and instead bring up the exposure on our light corners and our cabinet surround. So we now have all these options to play around with. And if we want to change the color, let's say the light corners and our TV surround, and we want to do it all at the same time, we can bring in shift a, a value node and we can just hook that up to our light corners, which is here. And then we can bring in a reroute node, shift right drag and hook that up to there. And now we have full control over, over the color and same thing goes for saturation if i just copy that node and plug that into the saturation i can now make it more saturated or less and they will all respond correctly and then i could also turn off the spotlights and if i were on a movie night or i have them on and just dial them way down i would imagine lights like that would have a dimmer switch but this is where it became important that Prior to rendering, I gave them all exactly the same color. So now that I've adjusted the hue, it bases that off the same color. So the hue on all of them will be the same. That one would have to be made prior to render. Another thing that I have full control over now is how much glare each light source brings in. Let's bring everything back to normal and uh, let's start with the nighttime scene because that's where you would see the most glare so let's set the exposure on all of them to zero for the time being so now if i bring in a glare node i want to set this to fog low and i drop this in and view this uh, actually what i like to do is i'm going to copy one of the mix rgbs and i'm going to put the glare node in the lower socket and the light group into the upper socket and that way i have a little more control over how much of that glare actually gets added to my node so i'm gonna set the mix to one so i only see the glare from the node and then i can adjust the threshold a little and set the quality to high and now if I go into my add node, I can have a little more control over how much of that glare actually gets added to my scene. And I can do this. If I copy these two nodes, I can do that now for all of them. And now we can adjust every single glare node to how we want it. So for the light corners, for example, we probably would have the strength a little up. So if I dial down the threshold, see how strong we want to have it. Um, the light corners will probably be a little stronger, something like that. And then I can control how much of that glare I'm actually going to add to it. So here we would have to dial the threshold down quite a bit and play with the exposure a little more. So you can see I have a lot of control now over that render and how it's going to look without re-rendering all the time. One more thing I could do in here is I would bring this one all the way back. And if I turn the nighttime off and go back to a daytime scene, 
bring my exposure and the scene a little up to where I was before. After the first mix note, I bring in a color balance note. Once I have my HDRI and the supporting environment lights added together, and now I can make this a little bit of, of a warmer scene and play with the uh, values a little to give that daytime look a little bit of a different tint. And once I'm completely happy with my scene, I have my setups for my daytime and my nighttime scene, I can then go in and add a filter denoise. And I can plug that one in. And I'm going to drag in my albedo and normal from the render layer node in there. And if I preview that now, I have a nice daytime scene denoised. It looks clean and I can switch that over easily to a nighttime scene. So at this point, I usually would save the image out and pop it over to Af Affinity. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just do some compositing in Blender. So I'm just going to drop in a couple notes here. So while I add these notes here, if you want to get a deeper introduction into the compositor and learn the fundamentals from a very accomplished artist, uh, CG Cookie just released a series of fundamental courses with compositing being one of them. It's called Core and it's a great series, a wealth of knowledge. I've already done a couple of them. It's, it's just great. And if you want to sign up for a monthly subscription right now, you can use the code SASHA20 to get a 20% discount on your first three months right now. Details in the description. This is not a paid ad. I don't get anything for it. Uh, I just believe in the quality of their content and it's just a great community to hang out and talk about Blender and other things. So I, I'm, all, I'm there all the time. Uh, you can get ask questions, you get support. So go check that out. So just to give you a quick rundown what I've done, what I've brought in here. So I'm gonna bring in a lens distortion. I'm gonna set it to fit and I'm gonna put it to 001. Very, very subtle effect. It's barely noticeable. I'm just gonna mute that denoise a little because that takes the longest of everything to, to compute. So it's just a very, very subtle lens distortion um, which you would get from a camera usually you can even bring in a tiny amount of dispersion like i say it's it's barely noticeable so then i'm brought in in a lips mask and i want to just make the corners of the image just slightly darker so i'm going to make this fairly big and i'm going to connect it to a blur node I'm going to set it to relative and bring it to about 40%. Just so you can see a little bit of shade in the corners, which I then add together with a uh, mixed color node. And I'm going to set it to multiply. And that way we just have this li little effect here, which is way too strong out of the bat. So I'm going to bring it down to about point three or point four or something so there's a little bit noticeable and then the last thing i want to do is bring in a texture which i have to create first so let's head on over to our texture tab here click on new clouds and set the size to 0 0.001 and change to color and i'm going to call this grain and i'm going to select this one here in the texture tab and I just want to make sure that the X scale is set to the right aspect ratio, which is 1920 divided by 1080. I'm going to plug that color into the image here and set that to overlay. And now if I reactivate the noise, the denoiser, still way too strong right now. So I'm going to dial this back to about 0.3. Let this give this a second to compute. And we can see now we have a, a denoise image, but we have nice film grain in there. And that's really all I want to do for the compositing on this one. Let's just hook that up to the composite node. And there we have it. So are there any drawbacks? Uh, yes. Yes, there are. Unfortunately, I don't have access to black body values in the compositor. So if I have 
a light that has realistic values with a black body node. I cannot access that in the compositor. All I can do is change the saturation like we did with the spotlights here or the hue. And to get back to the curtains quickly here, the reason I have these in here is to hide the edge GRI. Because one of the biggest limitations is that we cannot change the HDRI or rotate the sky texture. That's something we just cannot do in compositing. Uh, for example, if you were to do uh, like an interior scene in a condo in a high riser and you would have the city in the background, if you were do, to do the nighttime scene, you obviously would want to have the night, night skyline lit up. That's not something that you can quickly switch out in the compositor. Uh, you would have to re-render that. Or if you modeled the background, that would be a different story. That's why on a scene like this, I would have a curtain there or I would angle the camera so I wouldn't see the out of the window or just have too much reflection in the glass that I cannot see outside or just have a scene so that it can pretend it's pitch black out outside of the window when it's dark. And that's a wrap. Now you know how light groups work and I hope this demonstrates to you how you can utilize them to get a bunch of different lighting setups out of your scene without having to wait for Blender to re-render the whole scene, which can, let's be honest, take time uh, depending on your hardware, depending on uh, lighting setups and complexity of the scenes. It's a huge time saver. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like time savers and more quality of life improvements, you need to watch this video where I talk about just that.